So a video on how I changed the front master differential lock on our 460 G-Wagon. Uh, we've had this vehicle since 1985. Uh, the rear's working, the front would not lift. It was like it was hydraulically jammed or seized. Um, the rear locker was still working. So a brief overview, there's our uh, fluid reservoir in the engine bay on the left side, which receives conventional brake fluid. So yes, there's a deficiency of fluid, but that's not the cause of the problem. And so I couldn't find much info on this stuff. So if it's of help to anybody, um, just a brief overview of the system. So from the brake reservoir, the flexible tubing goes down the left side of the vehicle, and then it joins up to a rigid brake line below, you can see here from the underside. And then they run to just behind or just next to the transfer case, you can see what are the front and rear master cylinders. It, this is the rear master cylinder towards the back of the car. And these go up to the levers that you just saw in the engine bay. So pulling them activates the springs, pushes the master cylinder and then through rigid brake lines, for example, it runs to the rear of the car, to the slave cylinder here. And there's a flexible brake line at the rear, which attaches to the slave cylinder. There is the bleeder valve on the rear slave cylinder. And on the right side, you can see the electronic switch with the boot over it that tells you on the console that the, the lock is activated. So a flexible brake line comes down from the roof and both of the rear brake line and slave cylinder lines are the same line. So if we go towards the front of the car, you'll see the front slave cylinder, which is actually has a banjo fitting on the left side of the screen. You can see that line is different to the rear brake line. There's the electronic switch. So you can see the rear set up from the bottom. It will move. The front one will not move. It's, it's jammed there. So just to determine if it was something simple like the lever, which is very unlikely, I think I've just disconnected the master cylinder connecting rod from the lever system. And once I flick this off, you can see it moves freely. So the lever is not the problem. So I'm just starting to work through these things. Reportedly, these master cylinders do fail under the most likely of a failing or non-working system. So that's without the lever connected to the master cylinder of the front locker. So I've taken off the little connecting rods out of the master cylinder on the rear one there. You can see it just sits, sits, physically sits in there. And so it's pushing the cylinder and then the spring inside that cylinder will return it um, depending on what you're doing with the lever. So using the 13, I'm just taking off the two brackets on the spring mounting bracket and then 17s to disconnect the actual two master cylinders take that whole bracket out at the start it's not difficult to put in and out um, and its removal very much simplifies access to everything so you can see everything's sort of disconnected now there's a few things holding the bits and pieces in including that f piece the plastic tubing now that's where your brake reservoir is fleeting all the fluid in i've got a new one they can reportedly snap uh, that was not my problem but i had a new one purchased anyway so I'll put that in the second, and they're the two rubber grommets, which um, if you're using your own cylinders again, it's probably worth replacing them. So I've disconnected that F piece from the front master, and you can see brake fluid comes leaking out. I'm just waiting for all that to come out. And there's the rear master cylinder disconnected from the F piece. The F piece is pretty easy to get out. There's just a single Phillips on the bracket from the flexible tubing, which is attached to some rigid line. So here is an 11 to get the rigid brake line off the front master cylinder. This rigid line goes all the way to the slave cylinder of the front differential. So the front one's come out. You can see they're looking grubby as hell after 35 years of no service. So 
So I'm just taking the boot off there. Now there are repair kits available for these, which include the, the internals, which are actually pretty simple and you'll find them readily available from a number of sources. But luckily I was able just to purchase an entire front master cylinder. There it is there. Um, you cannot get the rear reportedly from Mercedes-Benz, um, as I would have just done them both. But there's a new front one looking tidy. There is a slight difference. You'll see at the top that little uh, silver attachment or gold attachment, whatever it is, the F piece attaches in the top there. I didn't need the new grommets after all because they're included with the new piece. So I'm just going to remove that F piece there, which is pretty straightforward. It's got the oil to uh, lubricate it, so it comes out pretty easily. And my young son is filming for me. Um, with the G-Wagon on a hoist, so please uh, keep this in mind on your criticisms of the footage. So just pulling out the F-piece, which thankfully didn't come out all of a sudden and leave me elbowing the chassis of the car. That one was intact, and what's interesting about the old and the new, the new ones are a fair bit shorter and have a slightly different attachment to the, the feeding line didn't seem to make a difference. So you can see where the F-piece goes into that grommet. Now there's that silvery fitting that needs to be removed if yours doesn't have it, because it does, uh, it did cause me some hiccups, meaning after I put it all in, I had to take it out again at the end and take it off before reinstallation. So the F-piece is going back on. No major worries there. And then the new front master cylinder goes on. Clipping them in is actually a little bit difficult in that limited space. As I said, take that whole bracket off at the start. I didn't do that in the pictures before, which I should have done. Just makes everything easier. So I've removed the rear master cylinder now, which was functioning. You can see the front and rears are different. They're not the same piece. So there's our front one in. I'm just cleaning up the rear one, covering the holes while I'm giving a good uh, scrubbing, looking a bit tidier. Again, I probably could just get the repair kit for them. I did change that rubber grommet. Now they go in only one way, so pay attention when you pull it out because if you don't put it in the right way, the thing doesn't clip in nicely. So they're not symmetrical grommets, so just keep that in mind when you put the other one in. There's the two sort of little inlet holes on top of that, you can see with the grommet out. Grommet's about to go back in with a new one. I think I actually put it in the wrong way first then learnt the hard way. So clipping on the rear one, which was actually a little bit difficult, I would not wish to do this job without a hoist. Um, it'd be very painful, um, but you have to do what you need to do. So luckily I had access to a hoist. So these are the connecting rods which go into the master cylinders and basically just push on them. They're not physically attached, but then attached to the hinge mechanism of the levers. Um, they do sit through the rubber boots and inside those, the donuts at the bottom, there's some little clips which are replaceable and I'll show you those in a sec. That's just pushing the rear lever out of the way. So you can see the brake line attached on the rear. There we go, there's the new F piece in place. And you can see there's that little silver bit on the front one, that needs to come off. I should have taken that off and that actually meant I had to take the whole thing out again and do it all again after removing it. So if your car doesn't have it, don't leave it on if you buy a new one. So the bracket's going back in now and this is where that silver piece played in because it actually meant that after I'd reinstalled it all, the actual mounting there was pushed towards the rear of the car a little bit, and that does actually make enough of a difference that getting the front brake line on it is bloody hard, and that carries over to the rear brake line. So just pay attention if you're using a new one, if you're using your old one with a repair kit, uh, it won't be a problem. So here I am before I realize I've been ambushed. Just putting the 13s back on and then the 17s. And just putting it all back together. 
So these are little um, new clips that go inside the connecting rods. Now interestingly, these didn't actually fit very well into the rods. Perhaps I needed to clean the living hell out of the internals after getting the old ones out. But crimping them in was actually very difficult. Um, to the point that I actually ended up using some of the old ones again because I couldn't get the new ones in without deforming them. They were quite soft metal. So just flicking the old ones out and just putting the new one, there's two, um, one on each side, putting a new one in there. And you can see here, I'm just using the pliers to crimp it in, but they will deform. One or two of them just bent beyond salvage. So the connecting rod just goes through the rubber boot and on the inside of that arm before a clips secures it. Um, you should feed it through the rubber boot first and then put the boot onto the master cylinder rather than trying to push it through the rubber boot from the outside, so to speak. There you go, you can see I'm just putting it on first and then attaching it to the master cylinder. So you can see it just sits in there. It's not actually secured into there. It's just uh, the force of it holds it there. So putting the boot back on, and that would be the rear master cylinder completed, as well as my son's thumb on the lens. I had to let him play the computer for a few hours after this. So that is the rear differential lock lever. Now this is part of the reason that I realized I had a problem with that stupid front bit on the master cylinder because the lever wouldn't then go up and down freely. The angulation of that bracket, which you could almost see there, that's the bit that needs to come off. Do not put that in if yours didn't have it on. Rear one up. Rear one down. Front one up. Front one down. So you can see they're moving freely now, which was great. Don't worry about the lever or the, the knobs, so they can be adjusted. So I topped up the brake fluid. Now again, I'm sort of not showing you that I had to undo it all again at this point and take that bit off. And putting those brake lines on is not pleasant, so that disappointed me a great deal. So just the air in the system starting to come out a little bit. Now I don't have a suction device, so I'm gonna manually bleed this in a second, which I'll show you. As I said, without a hoist, you would not be walking well for a few days. It would be a painful task. So luckily, it goes up. You can see I had some custom manifolds made when I had the V8 put in. So using a 10 to bleed the valves here, I'm at the rear. There's the bleeder valve. Cap comes off. Now you free it up with the lever down. All right, lever up. Lock it lever again. Lever down. Lever up. Lever down. It is down. Lever up. Good. Up. Clear oil starting to come. Clear. Lever down. Lever up. I'm going to do this one more time, I reckon. Lever down. Lever up. Lever down. So that was probably about eight or nine actuations, topping up the oil again. And then onto the front one, and this has me scratching my head. I did not get any pressure out of this. I don't understand at this point in time. So you can see. Lever up. There's no fluid coming Lever through. Lever down. And I did this a number of times. Lever up. Lever down. I even did it with the feeding line just on the right of that picture detached. Lever up. So it's not a problem within the slave cylinder. There's either a blocked line, a hard Lever line, down. or a blocked feeding line with that banjo clamp. So I undid the banjo, put degreaser and a brake cleaner on it that hasn't fixed it. So another day, at least the lever is working, but uh, to be continued and hope that's been of help.